I mean, I love the wonderful little kind of tidbits about her and is it tidbit or titbit? It's, it's technically tid. I've always wondered that. Like, as, as I said it, I was like, what? Is it, is it, do you know what it is? It's tid. Tid. You can make it your own. You, I think you can do whatever you like. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Um, <laughs> I think I've always said titbit as well and not tidbit. Maybe it's a British thing. If you know the exact way you're supposed to say that word, let me know in the comment section. Right, Emily Blunt, you've just heard from her. You're going to hear from Killian Murphy, also Robert Downey Jr., three of the stars of one of the best films of the year as far as I'm concerned. Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Have you seen it? What did you think? Let me know. Right, are you ready for this? The three of them sat down in LA for a special Q&A session to talk about this incredible movie now that the SAG strikes are over sit down get a cup of tea whatever you need you're gonna love this it's pretty entertaining yeah it was terrifying but I think in, uh, I, I, I kind of love being terrified about work I think it's important to feel the pressure it's important to feel like how the hell can I do this uh, um, I think that the gr greatest work comes from that and it was extremely exciting then you know he flew to Dublin and I sat in his hotel room you know, these guys, the best actors in the bloody world, you know, for these other parts. So you feel very kind of safe knowing that you'll be in scenes with these, with these guys and you've got Christopher Nolan directing it. So like I, and, and, and we have this long um, working relationship and we have a, we have a great uh, understanding and a great, and great trust in each other. So, so yeah, you feel kind of, uh, secure but 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 kind of terrified. I remember just because we never really got to watch it with an audience and together you know which was it was sad but so when we got back to New York and the strike was hitting John and I managed to find uh, one IMAX screen in Nyack, New York in a <laughs> shopping Let's mall. Let's go Nyack. <laughs> Guys, who's from Nyack? Um, we found a, a couple of seats in Nyack, New York at 4 p.m. and I saw a group of teenagers walk in dressed as him. Oh and I remember with pipes was dangling, play dangling out of their mouths and the hat and I just, I like squeezed John's hand. I was yep. like, oh, it, this is crazy. It was so thrilling. We have all been awestruck by it and continue to be. It's very difficult to put into words what it means to everyone. I think that quiet desperation that she must have felt, I think I just gathered, it gathered speed for me more and more as I empathized more and more with the idea of a really extraordinary brain going to waste um, as she tried to contort herself to domesticity, which she was not built for. It wasn't in her nature to be a good housewife or a good mother. And yet it was so sort of shameful to be those things at that time. Um, I think there was like a ferocity of, she just didn't care what anyone thought about her and was completely unfiltered and I just fell in love with that. It's who, who winds up on the right side of history last. It's, it's, a, it's a weird game that's kind of like, a, you know, operator, I guess. Um, it was certainly fun to play with. And again, you know, watching, uh, I want to say too, there, the first time I was in the makeup chair, I was about to start working. Emily comes in and goes, oh, are you? You're going to love it. It's going to be really hard, but I really feel like, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I we were really cross about what was being done to your hair. I think you were just. I liked it. I was like, take more out. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't okay. know. That's what that that wasn't the vibe I walked into. You know. She's so <laughs> argumentative. Um, and then seeing Killian, he's like, one day you come in and he's just like, what did you just do? Thirty scenes and he just got back to the door with like sand blown in his eyelids, and I was like, hey, you know, last night he goes, last night I came back to my eighteen dollar night hotel room, and I put my fucking bags in the hallway. I was like, fuck, I haven't checked out yet. I have to sleep. Every indignity that could befall someone who's trying to do something, it was like. It was like the tears of Job. <laughs> Forget the call sheet and the job, it was everything else. 
it was the most Irish experience I've ever witnessed. <laughs> and it just couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Completely mind-blowing, life-changing experience, but it kind of has been working with Chris from the beginning. Uh, you know, it's taught me so, so, so much working with him, and primarily, it's all about the work. It's just the work. It really is. He, that's all he thinks. He about. says he's a craftsman. Well, and you is. can really tell that by watching his work. He doesn't see himself as a Hollywood guy, even a filmmaker. He's a craftsman, 100%. and I think that shows in every frame of this movie specifically. It, it, it really does. And 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 and, he, and you know what? I, what I all, always loved about him is that he he presupposes this level of intelligence in the audience always, and he's not afraid that's to rare. push it. And and he never panders. Uh, to an audience, never talks down to an audience, and that is so refreshing, and and it's been proven with this movie, you know. And then I will say, on this particular experience for me, it was to work with the level of actors that I worked with on this film. Every day was like some sort of uh, setup or like some joke. <laughs> there we go. All right, it was some Ken Brenner, Gary Oldman, Robert Downey Jr., Emily Watson. It was like every day you didn't know who was going to walk. I, I was, you know, I, I was so tired. I probably wouldn't check the call sheet, and then I wake up and go. Fuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretty much in every frame and everything. Yeah. yeah. So it was, but then and these guys just came in and they were incredible. And the preparation that they had put into the, the whatever size part it was and the fo focus and it was just, you know, you come away buzzing after that. So I'll never experience that again for sure. It's just kind of mind blowing. I mean, um, I was over back to LA many, many times. Uh, after the time he gave me the script to the time we began shooting, which is around six months, just testing everything, testing hair and costume makeup and testing with Emily and all the old, old makeup. And um, and then when you're on set, there is no, uh, you're just working. It's complete focus, complete rigor, complete uh, attention to the work. He expects excellence from everybody, every single crew member. Uh, uh, and people know, know that, that it's kind of unspoken. Uh, um, but they, no, nothing ever feels rushed, ever. So no scene ever, ever gets left behind. And when you're in a scene, I think I can speak for all of us, like that is the most important thing that's happening. And there's always appears to be time to go again. If you want to go again, you can always ask Chris, you can go again. And so that is sacred. You know, the, the performances are sacred. And because there's one camera and Chris, there's no video village. So it feels really, really private and intimate. So it does feel like uh, an independent film on, on this vast kind of canvas. Um, but then bang, you're on to the next, you're in like another part of America, and then you're shooting again, and you're in. So, it's, so it, 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 it feels like once you're on the train, the train has just left the station and you're on it, and that is it. And then you wake up and you're, it's over. But well, that was my experience. <laughs> there was one line I remember from the book, and it, one of the uh, scientist's wives said it about her, and they said, Kitty didn't do small talk, she only did big talk. And I really, that one really resonated with me, because, you know, in the book, people were not always full of praise for her, because she was very difficult and unpredictable. And, and not times. conforming to the times. Yes, and a non-conformist, so would throw kind of wonderful cocktail parties, but that was, it was sort of cocktail parties with no food or anything <laughs> else. You know, very austere cocktail yeah, parties. Lots of cigarettes and lots of vodka. I went, uh, I went into Chris's extremely Spartan office at Universal, and there was a picture of Killian that was kind of one of the first released with a hat, and then I was like, wow, dude. Like, all right, he's clearly arrived in the character. I better find one. And then by the time Chris put a, uh, I think it was a 70 mil test yeah. print on the wall, and then I was there, and then Sister Bear, and then it was kind of like the story was happening because he was demonstrating it's going to look like this and feel like this and go, wow. You know, um, it's not just the black and white or the size of the camera, it's also stuff where like sometimes you're like, all right, well, let's just do uh, one more. Uh, Nilo, let's get the IMAX out, and this goes, <laughs> Say the fucking words. I mean, I do think it was easier for Brother Bear over here and I to just, like, <laughs> pop in and out. Um, I think it was a, a, a Herculean um, 
had a foot for Killian every day and but we had fun. We did. We really did. And like Killian and I did Quiet Place 2 together, so we kind of oh my we, we go back a bit, you know. <laughs> so it was just wonderful and we did have a laugh um, when he wasn't in his monastic cell having a bath and <laughs> taking melatonin and going to bed. But um, but it, it was there and Chris actually, even though it's a very focused set and it's private and it's intimate, it's all those things. And Chris is this incredibly authoritative guy that I think people are a bit scared of. Loves a gossip, <laughs> loves it. Like any time you can share something about someone you work with, he's like, who, tell me, you know. Um, <laughs> We're all here uh, with our peers. And I think the interesting thing that's happened afterwards is yes, we had this transformative experience. Yes, Chris was at the helm, yes. Killian hosted it and, and carried it, but the rest of us all watched that interplay and, and came in and, and filled in all the color by numbers of it. And it's been transformed, literally changed my life. My life probably needed a little change. Um, but it's those things where you have these moments where you go, oh yeah, I can aspire to that. It's not to replicate that, but it's to find that part of myself that would do something really difficult and unlikely to connect, but it's the, it's, it's, it's why we do this, you know? I mean, I'm not sure I can, you know, top this, beat that, <laughs> that absolutely, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm really not. Um, I agree with the safety net that someone like Chris offers you because often, as you guys know, if you're on a project and you might have a leader who has their, their, their ego is involved, there's a different agenda, there's a, a lack of a collaborative spirit, and I think all of that tightens people up, and you, you don't have the wings of freedom, you don't have somebody um, catching you, you know, and I think if you feel that catch, and it's as robust as it is on a set with Chris Nolan. I did feel everyone had that ability to take flight and because you have no concerns, they're gone, they're gone. And it's just, and he's so curious as to what you might bring. He's a huge fan of what you do. Huge you can tell fan. he's and mystified by it. Yeah, and he would, because he doesn't have a monitor, so he would often stand by the enormous IMAX camera or, you know, and he'd just watch you, and he'd watch your face, and watch you in the scene, and and he's a big guy, Chris, but you kind of don't notice him anymore, but I, I always found it like really moving that he he did that. It was cool. Right, Emily Blunt, Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr. I love the chemistry between all of them. A film made by Christopher Nolan, it's called Oppenheimer. If you haven't seen it, guys, it is absolutely Amazing. Also based on a true life story, which is always quite fascinating to see how history is shown on the big screen. Christopher Nolan does it so beautifully. Oh, this cars! I cannot say enough good things about them. Let me know what you thought about it when you watched it. If you haven't, shame on you. Come on, sort yourselves out. Leave a comment, subscribe, turn your notifications on. I'm Max and this is Flip Your Wig. Bye.